and welcome. In today's video I'm going to be doing a little drawing of this blue tit and then I'm going to pop some watercolour on him. Um, so to begin with I'm using this, I think it's the last piece of paper actually in this pad, it's the Fabriano watercolour pad and there was only 12 sheets in it actually and it's quite a small one and I'm just seeing it's cold pressed. Okay so, but a really nice little pad and a handy size for doing something as delicate as a little blue tit. So the photograph again was off Pix Pixabay and I've chosen this one. There was absolutely loads of pictures of blue tits on there so you could go for any one you liked. Lots of very very nice clear photographs but I quite liked this one because he's got his back to us so we get this overlap of his wings here and I will link this photograph in the description below but I really like the way his little wings are curling over each other like that and then his tail coming towards you so I thought that was a nice shape to get. So you might recall that I did a video a few months ago on a robin giving the basic shapes of a little songbird. Excuse me one moment, there's an ambulance going past, I'll just let it get out of the way. That's better, sorry I couldn't uh, hear myself think then. Um, so yeah, I did that little robin breaking it down into shapes so if you didn't see that video I'll put the link up here because basically it applies to any little songbird you could use the same you know rules for any little songbird so if you think about it they've got a very they're very very light I mean imagine holding this little bird in your hand it doesn't weigh much he's a very light delicate little thing so you don't want to make him heavy you don't want to put too much heavy detail on there and take away that feeling of lightness and delicacy so I'm just going to start with the shape of his head. So he's got his head tilted and it's more or less a little oval there. And we could pop that tilted to one side at the top. So just break him down into shapes to begin with and this is going to help your overall picture. Then within that little shape, position his eye. And it's quite a big eye compared to the size of his face. And his beak's in line with that. So you can sort of roughly position that. And again, we can come back later and make sure that that's absolutely right. And then the shape of his body, it sets off about here somewhere to here. So don't worry about his neck at the minute. And his body is more or less fitting into an oval. Now with the robin, we did this more of a circle. But that was because we were seeing him from the side and we weren't really seeing all that wing and everything down the back. So that's a slightly different shape to what we did with the robin. Then you can line up the neck there so just join the neck so that gives that swoop of that shape there and then look at where this wing comes across so it comes across from about halfway down so we can turn that around so this little bit here is his body behind and then the same at this side get slightly lower than halfway down we can see we've got a little tilt there so this area here is slightly lower than there so it wants to be about there somewhere so we come out to there and then again across so you're getting the basic shapes in of where that is folded over and then look at the length of his tail is similar to that length there so it goes from from there to there is similar to that length so his tail wants to come to about here somewhere and just put the overall shape in don't put each individual feather in to begin with we can do that later on so it's like a little fan really because it's coming towards us and the overall thing has got that shape to it. And then we need to just position his little legs. So they're coming from under here. And because he's on the bird bath, we're just seeing the back of one foot and the other edge going off there. And similarly on this side, we're just getting that one back claw and then the front claws we don't see at all. So we'll put a little rim in there for the edge of the bird bath. And you can make that pretty imaginary, bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. You don't have to have it as it is on the photograph. Well, it's not a bird bath, is it actually? It's a bird feeder. We could turn it into a bird bath if you wanted to. You could put some water in there. We'll put the top line of that in as well. It comes to about there somewhere. It's obviously going to go off the edge of the paper. So if we imagine that swooping round that bottom line wants to be a bit a bit rounder than that so there we go so we've got a little bit of a it could be a bath or it could be a feeder it doesn't matter which we won't do too much detail in the background we'll just do the detail on the bird himself so now we need to come and put some more detail in so we, he's got a line going across here which goes up slightly if you look at that that's going up slightly and that's 
where these top feathers are coming over his wings because he's got his wings nicely tucked up. Now his, this wing's over the top and it's coming across from here and down. And this one likewise is coming this way. And this is all positioning everything so we know where things are joined up really. And it's like when you're doing anatomy with people, you need to know where things are joined up to have that accuracy. So he's got a sh this shape here is just feathers over, little feathers over the top, but it doesn't mean that the wings aren't extending up there just because we can't see them. So you need to know where they're at. So then you could put some lines in there just to indicate the separations of the wings and this side you really need to get that shape of the wings here now don't the feathers rather don't be panicking and thinking about counting every single little feather here just get an impression of them and the shapes of the line it's more important to get the direction of the lines than it is to be counting each little feather because if you do that you're just going to make yourself dizzy and it's you're going to get an equal impression of the bird by just popping in those lines quite abstractly. So the main thing is the shapes and the direction of these lines. So here, if you can see those, all those feathers are going this way and above his head as well. So here, get these markings in. So all this part here is going to be white. And then he's got this little cap on the top. And then underneath that there's a stripe that's white again joining up to his eye and then this part here is blue. And again with the feathers on his tail, just very roughly put them in. But don't be worrying about every last little detail. Because what I'm going to do now is go over this with a pen perhaps just to get more of that shape and then I will rub out some of these lines. So to do my pen work, I'm going to use this Faber-Castell pit pen and I'm using the extra small. So think about tailoring the materials that you use to the subject that you're doing. Again, it's very small, it's very delicate. You don't want a big, thick, heavy black pen, a very nice, fine one. So if you're doing an elephant or a cow or something else, you might use a slightly bigger pen and a thicker pen. So really think about what you're doing. If you're doing a delicate little flower or something like that, you don't want big, thick, heavy lines. You want to get that feeling of it being quite light. Now I'm looking at him now and I'm thinking I've got his eye too far back. So this is a good thing about doing pencil first and then pen. You've got two chances to think about things and correct things. So I'm going to move his eye slightly more forward than it is there. And of course, we're going to come back and rub out that line. So that's not going to matter. And I'm going to get the little lines in there of where that color is going off into the blue. And then I'm going to put his pupil in, but leave some reflection at the top there. And of course, if this is slightly wrong, we can come and put some extra paint on if we need to go darker later on. And we can come back on top of the um, paint as well with some more pen. And then he's got an outer edge to that eye. And again, how much detail you want to put in is entirely up to you. So the beak here, it's actually curving over this way it's not it, that's not a straight line the underneath side is much more of a straight line and then across here is quite a straight line so just look at that and put some shading in to form the shape of that beak because the light's catching on the top of his beak which is giving you that shape and then it's much darker at the end there where it's curling over And this is your chance now with your pen to get an impression of some of those feathers because with the pencil we just put the outside line of his head now we can make it much more sketchy so you can follow that line but don't make it a complete line and get a feel for some of those feathery shapes and make it very light and delicate so here all those feathers are going across his little skull but don't put every one in and don't overdo it leave plenty of white paper with but just give those impressions where it's most needed. So to form the shape of his eye socket there and underneath here, 
and then the shapes where the colours are changing as well. And by making that line with little dots and dashes and feathery shapes it's going to make it much more delicate than using a, a solid blocked line. And this colour here, the blue, we're seeing some of the back of his head there is going very much in this direction. But again, don't overdo it. And then it starts to come around in this direction and then that way as we go over. So that's probably enough line for on his head. You can see here where it's a lot darker and things. You don't need to do that with your pen. We can come back and do that later with the paint. And it's perhaps a little bit darker in here. I'm going to get a bit of that colour in. To get that eye shape there. And just one or two of these little bits you can see here little bits that are going to show up against the background to give that impression that he's fluffing his little feathers up and there's one or two straggly ones sticking out there so with these ones here they're not really yellow are they they're sort of a greeny color so get the general shape of the overall piece here but then if we look very very carefully inside the photograph you can see one or two shapes of actual feathers so just put one or two lines that way and then make a couple of shapes of some of these feathers like this but don't do every single one so just have some of the lines the way that they're crisscrossing over each other just to give an impression of the shapes of those feathers if you do every single one it's going to look too fussy on this little chap okay so coming down this side we've got a couple there you'll see i just scoop those round and then we've got some going in this direction so we just want a few lines there and then the edges of those are white the tips are white there which is something that we're going to have to remember and get in. We don't want to put paint over the top of these little white bits. Again, the same at this side. It's coming much further around. We're actually seeing some of the yellow at this side and the edge of his wing. So we're seeing more of this side of his body than we are of that. And again, we've got a couple of little ones down there. Don't forget whoever's looking at your painting of your little blue tit afterwards isn't going to have this reference photo in front of them. So you don't need to worry that every little feather is completely in the right place. So if you put that central vein in there as well, it's going to help with some get a bit more interest. These aren't uniform, they're all stacked up sort of on top of each other because he's took them in. But if we get that, that shape of that tip of the feather there and the direction, that's the most important thing is the direction of the way they wrap around his little body. So then the feathers here are coming down and they're quite fluffy over the top of his legs and it's quite a delicate colour that as well so we don't need to put some heavy any heavy lines down that side where that yellow is. So a nice straight line, I feel like we need to get this, this line here quite distinctive because it's a nice straight line there and two or three lines where those are all folded over and they're going underneath those ones there. We do see the bottom of one or two of them here as they come onto the tail. So just get those in. And then a nice scoop and around and the same here. Again, it doesn't matter if you get exactly the right number of tail feathers. Nobody's going to know or be counting them. But get those central lines in very delicately so that we've got it as if it's coming towards us and we know that it's a feather. And then at this side, Again, use some little feathery lines, not a solid line to make that shape of his body. And then his legs are going to be a bit heavier because they are more of a solid colour and darker colour. So we can put a bit of extra pen in there and make them a bit more substantial. And quite a complicated shape. He's got like a little knuckle there and then two or three round bits before his little hook that's ha ha fastening on to hold on to that there. So the same at this side, get the overall shape and there's a lot of detail in this foot so how much detail you put into that is entirely up to you but don't go overboard with it because again you're going to make him too solid for such a small little animal bird. Okay so there is nicely clutched onto the side of his dish so then we can put the rim of the dish in with the pen as well. And that can be completely impressionistic because it doesn't matter what colour the dish is or anything like that. 
that can all be imagined and make your picture your own really by altering things like that and you, you, again with the background it doesn't have to be the same background as is on here you can do whatever you want and it might be nice just to put a little bit of shadow on the bottom of that bowl and we'll have to think about whether we're putting feed in there or whether we're putting um, some water in there it might be quite nice to put a, bit, a little bit of a splash of water rather than food I think okay so now although this is a permanent pen and although it's fast once it's dry it does take a few seconds to dry so don't go immediately in with your eraser because you might um, smudge things and don't go immediately in with your paint just give it a couple of minutes literally a couple of minutes to dry and then come in and erase all those pencil lines so now we've removed those pencil lines, it looks much nicer, a lot lighter than um, it was before with those heavy lines there. One thing I'm thinking, looking at him, I've not got this angle here sharp enough perhaps. Um, maybe his head needs to be a tiny touch further this way, but that's entirely my fault. But again, nobody's going to have this photograph when they're looking at this, so that's not really a massive problem. So we need to think about preserving these white areas because we don't want to lose the white tips of his feathers or this white here. There's several ways to preserve your white. One is to use a wax um, resist. The main drawback with a wax resist is you cannot remove it afterwards. So you've got to be very confident about where you're putting it. The other thing is just to paint around those areas. Keep that paper dry and paint around it very carefully and that's perfectly fine that works well another way is to lift it out so after you've put your paint on with your tissue when it's still wet you can lift some of those areas out and also that's fine the only thing with with that is red doesn't lift out some colors don't lift out as as easily as others but yellow and blue do so that will be fine um, another way is to use which I'm going to do for you today is to use the masking fluid or alternatively if you do get to the end of it and you feel you've lost your tips and your white you don't have to um, panic because there are all sorts of things you can do to um, correct that you could go over with an acrylic paint or you could go over with an, uh, a white ink so don't worry if you lose your white there are ways of correcting it so I'm going to put on some of this masking fluid and I think I've mentioned this before um, I'll just pause the camera a minute whilst I get this lid off. I like Winsor & Newton products, but I hate the bottles. They're really, really bad to get off. So I do actually keep a pair of pliers in the studio for that reason. I cannot get these lids off without them. So I don't like the smell of masking fluid, it has to be said. Um, you can buy a blue one, which shows up a little bit better, but this is the white one, and it goes a sort of yellowy colour as it dries. You'll see that on the side there, it's a little bit yellow. I used to apply it a shaper, this one is a size naught and it's got a tapered point on it and as you can see that's just a little bit of rubber um, and the masking fluid doesn't really stick to that when it dries you can just take it off with your fingers if you use a brush don't use your best brush use an old brush um, and a small one and if you want the masking fluid to come easily off it what you can do is put a little bit of uh, washing up liquid on the tip of your brush before you set off and that will help the masking fluid come off your brush when you're finished but don't use your best sable brushes ever use a cheap inexpensive brush so I'll just pop a little bit of masking fluid on the end of my shaper and look at where he's the whitest and again I don't want to overdo it with this um, not too many highlights so here get that shape over his head over the top of his eye and it's catching the sun as well up here so you really want that there and you can add, exaggerate the sun a little bit because it doesn't look like it's been a very sunny day when the picture's been taken but it would be nice to keep it nice and light and bright so all this area here and then of course we're going to have to leave this to dry the main thing to remember with masking fluid is that you don't want to be leaving it on for days on end it's okay to leave it on for I don't know 12 hours or so um, even up to a day perhaps but if you leave it on for too long you'll end up finding it difficult to remove and it will damage your paper much more easily the longer you leave it on so I would recommend once it's dry begin your painting and get on with it don't be leaving it for weeks and weeks on end so I'm just going to put a little bit here not too much to catch that shape 
Again, the sun's perhaps catching the back of his neck and that's going to help us get that shape of the back of his neck there. And then we go down to, I'm going to put a little bit there, can you see, on the tip of his tummy. And if you put it in the wrong place and it doesn't need to be white, it doesn't matter because you, after you've taken it off, when you finish your painting, you can then paint over that piece of paper. Um, that's not a problem either. And these are very important, getting the tips of these ones. And that nice shape going round so that we know that that wing is overlapped. And again, they're catching the light a little bit on the side there. And one or two little bits on this side. and down here as well. So the good thing about this shaper is it's quite a small one and you can use it on its side to apply quite a bit of masking fluid or you can use the tip to get some quite fine lines like here down the side of his tail that's catching the light as well and he's catching the light a little bit on the back of his feet there where the sun is shining because his, his feet are quite sort of shiny um, and on the tip of his tail and actually just thinking about it sort of doing a bit of an imaginary background it would be quite nice to pop a little bit in there because if we're going to be putting water in here we'll perhaps want some reflections in the water so that'd be a good idea just to pop a little bit of masking fluid in the water of that dish and maybe even a little bit on the rim of the dish to reinforce that shape of the edge of the dish there and the same up here Okay, so I think we're in danger of overdoing it, so that's enough now. So the main thing is to have that absolutely dry before you come to putting your paint on. Now you can see as that masking fluid is drying, it's going yellow and that makes it much easier to see. Whilst that's continuing to dry, I'm going to just think about doing this background behind the bird and the dish. So I'm just going to wet the paper, but leave the bird and the dish dry in that top half. You'll see I did a margin on this picture, it makes it much easier to frame. And also you can test your colours down the side as well. Whoops, I seem to have picked up a bit of yellow there off the edge of the water pot. I, I use a lot of brusho in my work and sometimes you get an odd little bit of brusho that's attached itself and uh, that comes out it doesn't matter we'll just leave that to blend in it might not even show up to the camera so I've just mixed three colours up here I've got sap green cadmium yellow and cadmium orange and I want this background to be quite hazy and quite distant and not too heavy so plenty of water on that and then I'm literally just going to drop those colours in quite randomly into that water and leave it to dry and do its own things. So you could use whatever colours you like because these could be flowers in the distance, you could do a sky behind if you wanted to, but you really don't need to use the same colours as me, you could use whatever you liked. And I wanted it quite bright and sunny, but also leave a little bit of white if you want to as well. So I'm just thinking he's in a garden and maybe there's some sun, sun peeping through, some shrubs and some flowers and be very, very random with it and just drop it in and let the colours mix together. Because don't forget where your paper's dry, those colours are not going to go onto it, they're going to stay where that paper's wet there. And it looks quite bright at the moment, but don't forget watercolours dry about 50% lighter, so that's going to be quite light by the time that's all merged together and sunk into that paper and dried. And it's not going to distract from the bird. So that's very, very wet.
and as you can see it's pooling a little bit here so what happens with watercolor is you can see all that there if we just left that there this area here where it's slightly drier would dry quicker than this area and then whilst this was still wet and this was drying it, this paint this water here will be drawn back into this area and then that might make a mess so squeeze all the excess water out of your brush and suck some of that up you can do this with a tissue as well but it, that's just going to help avoid any of those messes there's a little bit of a pool there as well so just keep squeezing it out and then you're not going to get those accidents where and run backs that are very easy to get in watercolour so with watercolour you need patience you need to sit here and watch it dry really because you could go away and come back and find that it was a mess where you've got these pools if you did want to put more light into it at this point again you could lift out some colour as well as if there was some sun coming through some of those trees very easy to do with the side of a damp brush and I just think actually I'm going to put a li little bit more of the orange back in there seems to be too green and not enough orange a little bit more of the yellow okay so at that point we will leave it to completely dry so as you can see that's faded an awful lot I have actually got one or two run backs here and here where I've not scooped enough of that water off where I've had it too wet and um, it's easy to do with this paper but it just is a good demonstration to you to show you what happens you get this crinkly line where that water has been pulled back towards the dry area and it's actually not the end of the world because that could be the edge of a tree it could be a shrub it doesn't really matter and again you could lift that out if you really wanted to but I don't think we need to it could be the edge of a tree so I'm going to paint him wet onto dry but allow the colors to merge so I'm not going to wet the bird I'm just going to paint onto him but let those colors be quite wet and mix into each other so I've mixed two blues up I've mixed a cerulean blue and I've mixed some ultramarine but with the ultramarine I've also added a touch of Windsor violet because on the back of his neck here to me it looks quite mauvey and it does on the edges of his wings at the base there as well so I'm going to start with the blue and that's cerulean on the top of his little head and just make that cap shape and you can just go straight over the top of that masking fluid you don't have to work around it or anything or worry about that at all just pop it over the top and then he's got blue coming I don't know if you can see underneath that little white bit there more or less straight across and down which makes that shape of it going down and around and then he's got it around this edge these little wings the way that they're folded over around this edge he's got those coming around down to the tips there and the same at this side all in this nice cerulean so I'm working quite quickly if you're worried about it drying and, um, as you're working too much you could just do one little area at once just do his head and then move down I'm doing it quite quickly because it's easier for me to get it down quick for you to see and then you're not getting bored so I'm not doing all of his wings cerulean because there's quite a lot of um, ultramarine in there as well so the top half and the underside of the wings seem more cerulean -y, and the top half you've got more of the ultramarine and you could make different blues up because we all see colours differently so have a look at the blues you've got available you don't have to use the same blues as me use what you've got You know and if you look at him there's quite a lot of different blues in there I'm trying to keep it simple but you could go a bit more detail and use lots of different colors don't forget we've already got the shapes there with the ink so we don't need to be putting too many different colors on top of him with the paint 
So with the ultramarine it's sort of going off down the other side of that white bit. So we need to get that in. And then it comes all the way across and over his eye, or right up to the corner of his eye, and we need to get that dart there. And I might even go, go on to his beak a little bit with that. It just helps give you that line, because he's got a very distinct line where he goes all the way across from his eye. And it actually joins right up to his eye there, nice and dark. And if you look at his head, you've got a few little darker areas. So whilst that's still wet, pop them in. And that's going to help with the shape of his head. And then if we come down, it scoops all the way down and around and goes narrower and narrower. And that gives us the shape of his neck. And allow that to blend into that first colour that we put on there on the edge of his neck. And if we look down here, one or two of these are a bit darker, and the same at this side. Just in areas. And some of these wings going right down to where they cross over. So again, you can just not worry about that masking fluid, just go right over the top of it, because you know that that's going to be kept white. So keep your brush going in the direction of those wings as well, you know, flick it this way, don't be going across that way. Go in the direction of the way things are going, the same as you would do if you were doing a plant or a tree. Always paint in the direction that things are moving. And here, just one or two flicks of the brush, there's a bit more interest. Now this back bit here. There's blue underneath it and there's a lot of yellow in it. So I'm going to mix these two colours quite quickly. I'm going to put the a nice wash of the cerulean over. And like I said, it's quite green. So it's not just yellow. And pop that yellow there. And it looks funny at the moment because of the yellow of the masking fluid. It's um, detracting from his proper colouring. So now with the yellow we can do this side and the same down this side. There's a little bit of green in there as well but we're going to try and make it quite simple. Again you could use more colours than me if you really wanted to, make it much more complicated. I wanted to keep him simple. Okay so while it's still wet or wettish, it's drying quite quickly actually, I'm going to get a little bit of the ultramarine in a much thicker mix than we had before and a little bit of the Windsor Violet into that and some Burnt Sienna to make a slightly darker colour that's thicker just get a bit more water on my brush that we can just look at some of these very very dark areas with because that's what's going to make his shape. So here it's darker there and along the edge. And that's all helping to create that shape. And here, again, don't like your highlights, you don't want to overdo it. But it's just all going to help make him a bit more 3D. Putting your light and shade in there and reinforcing one or two of those shapes of the wing. Okay, so while he dries, because obviously we can't take that masking fluid off now until that paint's dry, Oh, I was going to say, we'll do the dish, but we need to do his legs, don't we? So let's just think about the colour of his legs. Again, I think the burnt sienna might be quite a nice colour to use. And I might use that straight out of the dish, and the, oh, sorry, out of the pan, and then perhaps put another colour on top of it. 
So they are browny, but they're also, they've also got much darker areas in. So we'll put the brown on first. And then I'll get this colour that we've just used so that it all combines and just pop a little bit of that into it and then that's going to make it all look like it's uniform as well. So be a bit free with your colours, don't be bound too much by your photograph. Obviously it needs to be a blue tit so it does need to be blue and yellow but don't be panicking too much. I'm just going to soften that off, it was a, it's a little bit drying too quickly. Um, like I say, you could do one area at a time. If you just did the head, these colours would merge a little bit more. It's been drying quite quickly, but they are move, moving together quite nicely. And this, this is a nice area. That's a good colour that we've got for that. Okay, so I'll go on and put a colour on this bird bath. I'm not sure I want it red. Let me just think. Yeah, maybe I will because I've got it. I've got it here anyway. This is a cadmium orange, not a red. Um, I'll just do the edge to begin with. On the edge at this side. So I often with the background and the things that don't need the same detail as the subject because obviously your subject and your focus wants to be on the bird. I quite often just end up using the colours that are left on my palette from the other things that I've been doing because apart from anything else it does mean that your picture hangs together well. It's uh, you know you've got a harmony in your colours that you're using the same colours throughout the picture. So maybe we'll make it a bit watery. Obviously, you're gonna even if it has got water in there, you're gonna see the um, colour of the bowl showing through. So again, this paper's dry, and I'm using the edge of my brush. Using the edge of my brush to get a few different sort of shapes and textures to give us a feeling that that's maybe some water in there and then back on the top with some more of that red to give more of the shape of the bowl as if we've maybe got a rim on it or something but let those colours merge together and also leave plenty of white paper and just here you don't want to have that definite line between the bird and that so just with a damp brush just tease your paint around while it's wet and don't be doing loads and loads of detail in there it's a background it's not the subject just have that nicely moving away from us and I think actually it wants a bit of shadow underneath to make it look as if that is actually sat on the table so once again use the colours that you've got in your palette so I'm going to use that and don't forget you do get shadows in water because water casts reflections on itself when it's um, wavy which it could be if the bird's been having a bath but also he might be making a shadow in the water so do pop some shadows in your water as well okay so we might as well come down and do this bottom half and for that I will wet the paper first And probably just pop all these colours together and let them blend together. Maybe mostly green as if it's perhaps sat on the grass, I don't know. But you can do whatever you want with your background. Just have a bit of fun with it, mixing colours together. And get that watery feel. That's why we like watercolour. Don't be too hung up on things merging merging together and worrying about them merging together. A bit of sunshine on the top of the water as well there maybe. And some shadow underneath. So use the colours up that you've got there to put some shadows underneath. Okay, now we'll leave that to completely dry and then we'll come back and see what it looks like with that masking fluid taken off. 
Okay, so don't ever be tempted to take your masking fluid off before it's completely dry and don't be rough. Be very, very gentle and have a lot of patience. Um, you can use an eraser, but if you do use a very soft one and be very, you know, gentle. I prefer to use my finger because with your finger you can tell where you've missed bits. You can feel if the paper's rough if you've missed taking a bit off. So very, very gently start and rub your finger across the paper and take a little bit of time doing this, don't rush it. And if the paper does start to tear and lift, stop and be much more careful. So it looks different altogether. And the thing about having these white parts just on the bird and not in the background means that birds are going to stand out from the background. And that nice bit of sun down the side of his tail and on the tip of his tail and there on his feet. And I was forgetting we'd put some on the bowl, hadn't we, and on his water. You, of course, could put some food in there instead of water. So now when you think you've got it all off, go over the whole page with a clean finger. It has to be said, you don't want a mucky finger. With a nice clean finger, go over the whole page and see if you can feel anywhere where that masking fluid is. And it isn't, it's nice and smooth. So there we go, so we've done him. So now we need to look at see if anything needs refining slightly. So get a small brush and just again, don't be getting lots of nice new colours out, just use what's left on your palette, nice and watery. It might just be that in one or two places you want to knock that white back a little bit. And soften a few edges and things and make a few shadows with some blue because obviously don't forget that white is very rarely white there's often shadows within your white And this bit here is not white compared to the rest of him. And here we've got these tips of the wings, the feathers. We'll just put a little line in between each one. So don't go and cover all this white up now that you've saved it. But just, you know, if there are areas where the shape needs just altering a little bit or you need to put some extra shadow on, that paper can still be painted on. Don't feel when you take your masking fluid off that that's it, that you've finished. And again, as I always say, how much detail you put in is entirely up to you. You might want to put some extra lines there on his feet. Um, now that we've got that masking fluid off, it just looks like it needs a little bit more shape to his leg. I just feel that maybe I need to get my pen out when this is dried and do a little bit more detail on the eye. The eye is not just perfect. But don't forget, as I've always said, the person that's going to look at your picture when you've finished it isn't going to have this reference photograph. They're just going to see a pretty picture that you've done of your little blue tip. I'm just going to get more of that yellow. In fact, I'm going to get a thicker mix of that yellow because I think that's going to make him shine out a bit more. So at this stage I'm just fiddling, there's all sorts of things you could do just to bring him out more, put some thicker paint on, but don't go too thick because don't forget your lines want to show through really when you're doing an ink and wash like this. But it's quite a nice bright yellow, nice to get just one or two more bits in there. Even on his tail, I think maybe we need a little bit more colour. 
and you can just reinforce some of them shapes as you're putting that colour on. Okay, so I think I'll stop fiddling now and leave him. Like I say, always say, you can carry on, you're going to have much more time than me to spend a lot of time getting that detailing of this little bird. But just make sure you've got an accurate drawing to begin with, that one oval for his head, another oval for his body, and then those wings overlapping, making sure that they come across each other. And that lovely little tail with that nice, this is the shape you need to get in for the tail, that nice curve there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know how you get on with your blue tit in the comments below. And if you'd like me to do more longer videos like this where I go through everything in detail, or if you find it excruciatingly boring me talking about all this, just let me know what you think, which type of videos you prefer, and if there's anything specific that you would like me to go through. So thank you very much for watching once again. I'll be back with you again soon. And bye for now.